Hey, sports card fans, it's John, Wade Boggs fan, back with another video. Hope you're all doing well. Today, I have a mail day video for you featuring a vintage card of the human vacuum cleaner, otherwise known as Brooks Robinson. And I also have another uh, vintage card, a Wade Boggs card, and a top short print image variation of a Hall of Famer to show off. So not a very big mail day video, but some pretty cool cards to show off. So I'm gonna turn the camera around now and show you what I picked up. Before I get into the cards that I wanna show off in this video, last week I did a video showing off some of my uh, baseball cards that have an autograph of a Hall of Famer. And I've said this before, I'm not the most organized with my non-Wade Boggs collection. And in the back of my mind, as I was trying to pull cards from various boxes, I thought I had some others. And sure enough, after I got done with the video, posted it, um, I did realize that I had a couple more cards that have autographs of Hall of Famers. So I thought I would show them off here as part of this video. And at the end of this video, I will have a link to the video showing off all my other uh, Hall of Fame autograph cards. So I suggest that you uh, check that uh, video out as well if you haven't. So uh, the ones I have to show off, uh, these all were uh, issued by Nabisco. And in various uh, food products, I want to say some of their cookies or something like that, you could, I forget what it was, certain UPC uh, labels and some money, you could send them in or whatever. Uh, the first one I have uh, was produced in 1993, and it is of Willie Sturgill. The autographs on these are somewhat uh, faded, but uh, because of the, I think, the ink that they used. Uh, but there's a nice uh, autograph of Willie Sturgill. And these next four uh, were issued the year later in 1994. So we have a Jim Palmer. And they all come with a, a sort of a certificate of authenticity. Next one is a nice one of Frank Robinson. Then we have one of Duke Snyder. And finally, Bob Gibson. Now, I think there was a fifth player. I want to say it was Don Drysdale. And when this issue came out, um, he happened during the promotional period. I believe he passed away. And so there are not many of the Don Drysdale autographs out there. Um, I either didn't get the the stuff sent in in time. I think it was maybe a, I don't know if you could choose um, or whether it was a random, I don't think it was a random selection because I think I got all the other four. I think there was maybe a total of five. And Don Drysdale, I want to say, was the fifth one. And unfortunately, uh, I was not able to pick that one up. But uh, some interesting, you know, not pack pulled autographs or, you know, in-person autographs, but they are uh, certified autographs from Nabisco. All right, uh, so for today's uh, mail day video, I'm going to start off with the uh, Wade Boggs card, of course. This is from 2008 uh, Upper Deck Baseball Heroes. And in this set, uh, it was uh, Boggs was featured in a solo card. Then he had one, I believe, with Don Mattingly. And then he had a triple player one. And this is one of the versions. I think this is the brown version. It's a Kari Stremski, Carlton Fisk, and Wade Boggs. And this one is serial numbered out of 149. Surprisingly, these are, they, they don't show up on eBay that often. Again, out of 149, you, you wouldn't think there'd be, you know, there'd be plenty out there. But you, it, you rarely see some of these color variations. Um, and I think there's maybe four or five different color variations um, from the base. And the base is more of like a, like a cream color background, but this is the brown. And there's the back of the card there. 
All right, for the short print image variation card, uh, this is from 2021 Tops Series 2, and it is of the great Stan Musial. Love that image. Old style uniform. That was my guess is based on how young he looks there. Um, late 40s, I would say. Mid, mid to late 40s. Um, maybe even earlier because he started his career in 41. So maybe, you know, mid 40s. But showing the back here, I, whenever I show off a Stan Musial card, I've, I, I have several of these short prints. Um, I just love showing off the back and his stats. Look at all that red. Batting title, OPS, slugging, um, not so much in, in walks, uh, not so much in RBIs, but triples, doubles, hits, runs, at-bats, games played, um, war even. Uh, finished with a career war of 128. Um, over 3,600 hits, 331 batting average. Um, the, the I think he's one of, I mean, I think everyone knows Stan Musial is a great player. But in terms of the the, the, the hobby, of course, he doesn't have that many cards. Um, you have some of the late 40s that are really, you know, really expensive. But I believe uh, 1958 was the first time he was featured in a Topps card. And uh, he retired after the 1963 season. So not too many years there where uh, he even has a Topps card. Um, man, I, I can just imagine what some of the, the mid-50s Topps cards would have looked like with uh, Stan Musial. But there you go. There's that uh, short print image variation. And now for the two vintage cards. The one, um, it's... It's not a playing days card of this player, but it's from 1976, and it's from the. Um, it's not an insert set, but it's a, it's a section of the set called the uh, All Time All Stars, it's the Sporting News All Time All Stars, Pie Trainer, Third Base, and then they nice, said uh, PSA Seven. Um, not a perfect example, a little off center, but hey, it's a nice uh, seven, and hey, for eleven bucks, including shipping. I couldn't pass that one up. Um, out of all the ones of the all-time All-Stars, I, I think he's probably the lesser known. Uh, maybe not or should not be the lesser appreciated. Um, there's the stats of his on the back. It is off-center on the back. I don't really, you know, didn't really bother me that much of the back centering, but you can hopefully make out some of his Stats, 320 career batting average, um, over 2,400 hits. But he played from 1920 to 1937. So there you go. Considered, obviously, even back then, um, probably the greatest at the time, third baseman. So there you have that card there. And then for the big pickup. This wasn't one where I was necessarily looking for this uh, particular card or of, of a Brooks Robinson card. I had various searches in eBay uh, for various years, various grades, seeing if I can find something that piques my interest. I saw the card, saw the grade, uh, saw the eye appeal of the card, and looked at the comps and said, hey, this is, you know, reasonable price card. And I was able to afford it. I think it cost me a total with the uh, shipping and stuff, uh, $45, which I didn't think was bad. But this is 1961 tops in a PSA 5. Um, again, not the, the perfect card. Uh, you know, the there's a little bit of a bleed over there in the blue and maybe, you know, a little off center top to bottom. But uh, nice, clean card. Um, love the image. I, I, I like the 61 design, uh, that color, two color border uh, at the bottom there with their uh, name and the team. Uh, some of the, the poses in 1961 tops. This is my first 61 tops graded card. So uh, really nice way to, to start off um, picking up hopefully some more 61 tops. Here is the back. 
Max a little off center again. I, it doesn't bother me. Uh, but there's his uh, stats there. It says uh, Orioles scouts signed Brooks as soon as he graduated from school. He hit more home runs in 1960 than in all his other seasons combined. So, yeah, he had uh, um, 14 in 1960. And, uh, yeah, yeah, more than his uh, career total there. Wasn't known for home run hitter. Uh, was more known more primarily for his stellar defense. I forget how many uh, gold gloves um, he had, um, all-star appearances, stuff like that. Uh, great ambassador of the game, great guy. I did get him to sign, uh, infamously, a baseball of mine. And I, I told the story that uh, when I knew he was coming to a local mall, I didn't have a blank baseball. So I thought, oh, it'd be cool to have. I had this other ball that had a Hall of Famer on it. So I said, well, it'd be cool to have two Hall of Famers on one ball. Of course, I was maybe just a teenager at the time, not thinking long-term or whatever. Yeah, the other person on that ball was Mickey Mantle. <laughs> so I had a single-signed Mickey Mantle ball. And now it also has uh, two John Brooks Robinson as well on it. So I, I probably ruined the value. I'm not looking to sell. So, hey, I have a baseball signed by Mickey Mantle and Brooks Robinson. Um, same league. Different positions, different teams, but they're both Hall of Famers. But anyway, uh, there you go. There's the, um, I'm just going to put that one right there. And with that, Wade Boggs, uh, as I have been doing lately, um, giving the total in my collection here on the famous sticky note, <laughs> I now have 5,349 different Wade Boggs cards. So there you go, my mail day video. Uh, let me know what you think of the pickups, uh, the additional Hall of Fame autograph cards that I found, the Wade Boggs pickup featuring two other great Red Sox players, a great short print image variation of Stan Musial, the Pie Trainer, and of course my first 1961 Tops pickup featuring the human vacuum cleaner Brooks Robinson. That's all I have for you. Hey, if you like this video, would really appreciate a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.